Trade What You See with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. Uh, Shane Smolian will be joining us at the half hour to talk to us about some astro cycles. I posted the chart here of the Dow E-mini um, e S&P. They look the same. Uh, you'll notice we had that big ABCD high yesterday up there at 4071. We broke all the way down 105 handles down to the uh, 3965. For there, we went up to 39. Uh, 4039, uh, yeah, 4039, and now we're back to just under uh, 4,000 even. Now, if we go below that low, folks, it's very important because if you'll look at this chart that I posted in the Tiger Den, you can see the cycles there on the bottom, and that means if that breaks, that means that's high translation. In other words, that the stock market cycle crested very early. If you notice the other ones that were there, you can see them right there. You see this high right here. That one right there, that that crested on the right side. That's very bullish. This one here, extremely bullish, cresting on the right side. But if it crests here, it goes below here, you're looking at a move that's going to take us uh, down quite a bit. So this is why we're watching high translation. Now, if it can hold its own and turn around and rally up from here, then that's a pretty good deal. And I imagine it's got a really good chance of doing that. Uh, because there's still a lot of time left in the day. But, folks, follow the money. Look what's happening to the gold market, folks. Uh, you know, we're up uh, more than $70, folks, in two days from that bottom that we were looking at in gold. If you'll remember, uh, it had some very, very strong things to tell you, you know, to be a buyer of that. And uh, it's had a uh, really nice run. The uh, Hold on one second. We'll get this up here. And the other thing that you want to watch uh oh, that's the wrong one. Just give me a second here. Uh, is to watch what's happening in the bond market because the bond market also is going up. That means a flight to quality. Now, I don't know if this is going to happen, but the banking stocks, they look so bad, folks. They look absolutely pathetic. I'm going to show you the one that Jim Bartoleone, who should be our guest tomorrow, God willing, and she usually is. If you get up here and look at the index, the equity index for the uh, NASDAQ banks, these are smaller regional banks, okay? Look at this, this thing is broken down, and not only that, with this really strong rally we've had the last couple of days, these have been dropping. And even if you take the best bank in the country, from my perspective, the best public bank, I'm not talking about Goldman Sachs or Morgan Stanley, but if you look at JP Morgan, I mean, this is a quality bank, folks, and it can't rally. Now, who knows something at JP Morgan or the people that own that stock know something that we don't know. Well, we're probably going to find out about it uh, two or three days later, or maybe a month later, maybe never. But somebody's selling that stock, even though the stock market rallied. One of the reasons why the Dow was up so much was the fact that we had a uh, big move in uh, Goldman Sachs today, and that made it a uh, you know really big thing to uh, pay attention to. So that's where we're paying close attention to this. But right now, we just got the S&P just made another inner market low here. At uh, I just saw the beeper come off at 39.92. I see gold's trading above 2,000 in the uh, uh, April contract. It's substantially above it in the June contract. So there's something going on. Bonds are making new highs on the day. There's something out there, folks. So be aware of what's going on. Why these things are breaking the way they are. I have no idea, but when you have the Fed come out there and Janet Yellen saying everything's okay and they're not going up, that is a sign of good news and bad action. So that's something that you don't give a perfect example. This was one this is one of the Los Angeles banks because it's been in the news First Republic. I want to get this up here so you can take a look at this. Here's First Republic right here. Now, you know, if you have your money in First Republic, it's okay. It's just the stockholders. These are the dudes that are getting creamed. Look at this thing. This was 170, and it was up 25% yesterday, and guess what? It's dropped another 25%, making new lows again. So they thought they had a deal, but evidently the deal was not as good as the one that Credit Suisse got from UBS. I don't know. 
What I fear, folks, is we're going to have one other or two other banks, and considering they're all going down, even Bank of America is getting creamed. I mean, only Goldman Sachs has been the one that has been the stalwart today. We went up to the 382 yesterday on Goldman Sachs, and I'll bring it up here and show it to you again so you'll be able to see this because uh, I think it's important that you pay attention to what's going on with these banking stocks because, by golly, that's a uh, that's a pretty a pretty big deal. I that's you know my two cents and I'm I'm sticking with it. So pay attention to that. That's a that's a really good one here to uh, to be watching. I also wanted to uh, show you the chart of uh, if I can get it up here. One second is our good friend Bitcoin. Now I'm just I don't I've never traded it, haven't bought it, don't plan to buy it. But I look at the charts because it's in the news all the time. It's exchange listed, but there, there's the price right here. This is the 382. We've been waiting for that. And I said, wait for an intraday pattern on a four-hour chart or a half-hour chart that gives you some place where you can get into it and not risk very much. And so I'm going to post this up here because all this is is a four-hour chart over the last uh, 10 days, I believe. And you'll see that you have this just absolutely beautiful symmetrical three-drive to a top pattern. You see how drive one and drive two and drive three are very equal? You have the A, B, C, D. They go right against that top of that channel line, and now they've started down. That channel line came in at 28,400 this morning, and then it started to break. So that's a sign that maybe the cryptos are having a little trouble. That 382 is a really powerful one, especially you were in a downtrending market. Uh, and you have left transaction, in other words, things crest real early, those are the ones that you have to be able to pay, you know, really super close attention to because those are the ones that are, uh, you know, right on the money. And that's what you want to be watching for are, are those particular ones. We've got just about an hour and a half left to go in the trading day, so anything will probably happen, and it usually does, but we'll, we'll, we'll cover that basis uh, when we get to it. But right now, the market, the Dow has given off uh, – more than 300 of its points. The S&P has given back uh, 40, 40 points out of the 50 points that it made. So uh, we're just in an area now where it's going to get really interesting to see how these things uh, unfold. Now, the crude oil market is under pressure again today. Uh, we've sold a little bit off yesterday and more today. So the main thing, the other thing on, on uh, commodities, folks, the soybean market is getting absolute massacre today. It was earlier. And that's telling us that uh, maybe the corn, wheat, and beans, and wheat's getting hit also. So there's uh, maybe demand has slowed up quite a bit. This is what we don't know. We know what supply is going to be, and we won't know that till the fall because that's when the crops will come due. And they're being planted right now. That'll all be done by uh, May the 15th. And then we just wait to see how they come in, and hopefully we'll have another bumper crop. We haven't had a failure in the crops for Many years, folks, but when they happen, boy, they really cause havoc uh, in the world. It's not something that is uh, that is really uh, something to be happy about. I wanted to show you here the uh, this is a small eight minute chart here on the Dow uh, the gold market today because we were watching this, and I'll talk about it when we get back. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Okay, folks, I posted a chart of Bank of America, one of the most popular banks in the country. I don't know what ranking it is, but I know it's way up there. It started as the Bank of Italy and uh, San Francisco by A.P. Giannani in, I think, 1906-1907. And you can see here that we're making new lows uh, for the year, last couple of years. Uh, something's wrong at this bank, folks. I mean, uh, I, I know your money's safe, but somebody's mismanaging something. You know, what is it? I mean, I don't know what the problem is. In fact, if it's going down means there's more sellers and buyers. Now, don't be surprised if, if a news announcement comes out that maybe uh, – Whatever, whatever, you know, somebody knows something. They're all doing it, folks. It's not just one bank. You know, it's all of them. And even Goldman Sachs is up today, but the rest of them are doing, you know, relatively poorly. I'm going to bring a couple others just to show you what they look like. Uh, this is J.P. Morgan, the premier bank. Okay, and I just want to show you uh, what, what we're doing here. Hold on, because, you know, it's making new lows, but we look at this on a, on a longer-term time frame. You're going to see it's still looking okay. But compared to, you know, some of these others that are all making new lows like this, this is not good. And even that, the, the government came out with Janet Yellen and <clears throat> Jerome Powell telling us that uh, Jerome Powell's not the government. He's a private bank known as the Federal Reserve. And uh, they uh, told us everything was OK. Well, I remember Ben Bernanke telling us in October of 07 that everything was OK. There were green lights everywhere. He could not see any problems in the uh, real estate business. And uh, they had a few problems in the real estate business. So very, very important uh, to pay attention to. Now, one of the things that I, I want to talk about here, Walt Bressert was a fellow who started cycles quite a bit. And he's the reason why you get to see all these things on your computer, because he and Tim Slater and uh, a couple of uh, – Mark Douglas and also um, Walt Bressert were the first ones uh, – not Walt Bressert, uh, Walt Bressert – Tim Slater, um, Mark Douglas, and uh, I'll think of his name in a minute. Well, uh, Jake Bernstein. Jake Bernstein's with us. Let's take a look at this. Is a this is what what uh, he was. This is what Walt was famous for. I just posted one of these just a minute ago, and I'll show you what he was talking about. See, what he was looking for is a market that's going up, has higher bottoms, and going down, 
higher bottoms, higher tops. That means it's going up. Just the opposite of that is you got lower tops, lower bottoms. It's going down. That's how you define the trend. Now, Walt did some stuff. There's an article that was written in 1998, March of 1998, 25 years ago. And, uh, uh oh, trouble in River City, boys and girls. I hear the. I hear the train a coming. It's going down the tracks. So be careful, folks. You got to be careful in here because we closed below yesterday's low. Something's not right in River City. So let's pay attention to that. Hold on. I got to turn these alerts off because I wanted to see what was going to be happening uh, at this particular time. Uh, but anyway, getting back to uh, Walt Bressert, if you want to see this total article, it's really spectacular, folks. And uh, it talks about, I'll just go slowly here, but it talks about how he got started. And, and he was, oh, God, he was such a stand-up guy. Oh, oh my God. Uh, he just, uh, his son lives here in, uh, here in uh, Tucson with his um, mother, who was Walt's widow. Let me turn this off. I got the beepers are going off here telling me that things are going down. I'll not worry about that anymore. But uh, I think it's worth the effort Um the, the only this was sent to me by George Pullman, folks, uh, one of my good friends from many many years ago. He's a big cycle aficionado, but he showed the things that were there. He Walt was so uh, he had some really great uh, ideas. I'm going to post this chart here where he uses a the S and P 500. Now you're going to see the price of the S and P 500, so don't faint, okay? Because it was a, a tiny bit cheaper. Back uh, 25 years ago, we'll get this up here to take a look at it. This is how Walt uh, detrended cycles. Let me get this up here to show you, uh, you know, what he did. He doesn't describe how he did it uh, in the letter because he thought it was proprietary, which it is. But this is how he determined what these cycles were and when they exploded to the upside. Uh, he tells you, he just does tell you that that's a detrended moving average in here. And uh, it was interesting the type of work that he did. And remember, this was long before the, uh, you know, we had, uh, well, this was stuff that was done when they first started doing computer stuff back in 1983. And uh, CompuTrack down in New Orleans, and uh, Walt was a member of that with uh, Tim Slater and uh, Mark Douglas. That's how I met Mark Douglas was through Walt because I met Walt in 1970. So I, I did some astrology work, uh, and I really believe that the markets are astrological. I have not I, I don't know enough to really make too much sense out of it, but the one thing I do know, folks, and I know it really well, is AB equals CD. And if you've got AB equals CD, you've got a, somebody in your back pocket that's going to try to help you the very, very best they can. That's all I can tell you, and I hope uh, that's enough to uh, give you some information that we want to be uh, listening to, okay? So let's uh, move on here for just a little bit. Uh, I've got a couple other limit minders in that are going off. Uh, we've got gold breaking above the uh, uh, $200 in the April contract, now trading at 202 If you remember, we had that. Ab um, this is one that, you know, people, actually people said, you have no chance on this one, folks. And I want to gift this up here. This is the importance of the 382 pattern, folks. I mean, it uh, the ratio, not the pattern, but... There's gold, okay? Now, there's the bottom right here, and we said that the it'll come right here to 3A2. I had this on for two days I talked about this. I even showed the ABCD in between. And I said, you buy it right there. That number was in the 18, uh, 1938. The low was 1936.90, $1.20 away. So if you used a $1.20 stop, you got stopped out right on the open or right on the low, and then it's had a nice rally and we're already way back up here into the two, three, two or three level, exceeding the 78%, folks. Do you know what the ABCD on this is, folks? Sit down, Billy Ray. Uh oh, I see a placard in the room. Johnny's got his placard up. $2,165 an ounce. Shut the front door and raise the rent. That's big money in anybody's language. Now, when we're coming up here in just a few minutes, we're going to have. The, it'll be a minute and a half is our good friend Shane Smolian is going to be talking to us about some astrology stuff. And uh, hold on just a second, folks. I, I Things are happening here. That they're good things, but I need to take care of them. Otherwise, the beeping will continue uh, forever and ever. And uh, we're making new lows. This is going to be a bad day, folks. Get ready tomorrow because 
this is I'm going to show you what you got in store for you tomorrow. Okay, just give me a second, and uh, I'll do that for you. And then we got a break coming up, and I'll post it during the break, and then you can take a look at it and decide where you want to be when you're climbing this big tree. Hold on just a second. Put this over here like that, and I will get this up here. Oh, there we go. We'll do it real real easy. Make it breezy. Hold on just a second. I think we're taking a break now, right? No, we've got a segment to go. But anyway, I'll get this chart up for you on the uh, at the break here. But stay tuned for Shane Smolian, folks. WolfTrader.com. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and I believe we have Shane Smolian, the WolfTrader.com, on the air today. Nice to talk Good to you again. Here. Been a long time. <laughs> long time. Part two. Hey, listen, I have a question now. We're sure. coming down here in the stock market. We're still in an uptrend because we've had higher tops and higher bottoms over the past five or six weeks. Now, are we? Were, you said in the previous show that you thought we were coming into a potential lowdown. We're over the spring equinox, and then we also had the full moon and some other stuff. So is there any other things that are there that gives uh, the bulls hope? Well, yeah. I mean, like I said, this this cycle that I'm looking at right here is is a long term cycle, and it's 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 pretty bullish. I mean, it shows us at a low into here, and you know, I I mean, of course, I mean, things are kind of crazy right now with the banking situation, but I mean, if things can stabilize, I think we've got a chance here to put in some type of a low. Uh, and 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 the one thing 
I just want to remind everybody, this is <clears throat> every crisis is different. And <laughs> like the 40s and the 50s is different than the 70s were different than, you know, 2008 is different than dot com different than now. And so the one thing I do want to remind people is that the Fed caused this so they can fix it. It's not it's not like the housing crisis or things are out of control. They can they can bring these uh, start buying the bonds again if they want to. So there's still a lot of firepower that the Fed has. And so what I always tell people is, you know, we have to consider this from the relative context text of what's going on. So if the Fed was like trying at this, like, let's say after COVID, the Fed rolled out all of these programs and started all of these credit facilities and the repos and quantitative easing and everything was just going full guns. And if we failed at that point, then I would say, you know, Houston, we've got a problem, right? We've got a problem. Mm -hmm. But the Fed is barely trying right now. I mean, they're doing this behind the scenes, but they're not really trying. It's kind of like I, I tell people, it's kind of like in sports, if the third string team is in or if like the, the, the B team wins, is that really the team that played? No, your, your starters were out, right? So they're not really trying right now. So I, you know, the one thing I would tell people is if they start to try, let's say they start quantitative easing and they start up with everything and, the, and they start up with the f credit facilities and all this stuff and the repos and then it fails, I think that's that's when you have to be concerned, but I don't I don't think we're we're there yet, and I think we're actually at a they're actually at a pretty good position. Like I said, that they've raised rates now, uh, they they're not doing QE now. They did raise that balance sheet, so I mean, you know, it, you can think of this as kind of like a synthetic QE. I guess it's it's not QE, but it has the same effect. Uh, that's the one thing you know that this QT stuff has has ended. Uh, they're they're expanding the balance sheet, so. You know, I think on the surface, they really kind of have to hold their narrative because behind the scenes, you can see what's happening here. So uh, if we start to see more of these banks fail, I, I ironically, Larry, I think that would be a bullish sign because if they do have to step in and start buying the bonds, I think that's going to be a very positive thing for the equities. And I think that's going to lead to an, a large-scale expansion expansion of liquidity. I think the liquidity cycle has already started expanding. I think it started back in October. We just barely saw it with the with the with the guilt operation, and I think we're starting to see it now. I mean, we're clearly we're seeing it. The balance sheet is expanding. Uh, so, just remember the context. Like they they caused this. This is not 2008, and they can undo it at any time that they want to. Uh, now, you know, longer term, what are the implications 10, 20, 30 years on the road? That's a different story. But in, in the short term, uh, I, I think this could be a potentially bullish setup. And if you do start to see, uh, like I said, if you do see some more issues or failures and, and they really have to step in on a larger scale, I, I think that's a bullish thing. I really do. Um, mm -hmm. And that's just how I see it. I mean, I look at everything through this perspective, you know, since you know before 2000 and before the 2009 lows, 2010 lows. Um, and after QE started, everything changed. So this is why I always look at, you know, what is the Fed doing? What are, what's going on with the operations behind the scenes? And the markets pretty much follow the flows of, of the Fed here. And they're very strong here behind the scenes. They're very determined to keep this market from crashing. Now, you would think, like I said, in this environment that the markets would be crashing, but they're not. So why is that? You got to ask yourself, why is that? Why is that going on? And the answer is because of what's going on behind the scenes here. So I, I, I still feel generally bullish. And there, there is also uh, you, you ask me a lot about this, Larry, about the steliums. And mm -hmm. um, I'm going to show well, you guys something well, here. Yeah, sh tell the folks what that means because that's one of the things that got me interested in these cycles uh, for 50 year, 40 years ago when Dr. Miller uh, told me this stuff. So very, very interesting. Okay. So, so. When the planets align longitudinally, so they, they're basically aligned on the same longitude, they they get tight and they make these uh, things. They make these steliums, basically, where they get bunched up. And if you look at the zodiac wheel, essentially all of the energies get concentrated together. And so, what this graph is here is this is a graph that I've made. This is using Alfie software. I actually created an index called the, the Planetary Stelium Index. And what this does is this essentially uh, comes in. And it finds when these planets are within a tight orb of each other. And then I, I created an actual index from it. So I call it the planetary stelium index. And when these peaks get higher like this, that's generally when these steliums occur. And strangely, these occur near major cycle lows. This happened in the March 2009 low. I, I know you, you were watching that a lot. 
but we're kind of in a, a little bit of a stelium peak here. So uh, right now we have this stelium going on here, and then later on into May there's another stelium, and then this will go away for quite some time, and then it comes back, and in 2024 we have a lot of stelium energy going on. So when we get into when we get into February, March, April, uh, May, June of next year, we start to see more steliums. But why should people care about this? Well, typically, if a market is going down, uh, it tends to punctuate lows a lot of the times. And when the markets are, uh, when when they're they, they can rally with these. So these tend to it tends to concentrate the energy of the planets, and the markets tend to rally with this. It's a strange thing, uh, but. Uh, it, it, it has an effect. So right now we are in a, a midst of two steliums right now on these markets. Uh, you know, one of them is just peaked, and then there's going to be another one, like I said, into May. So that can be positive for the markets uh, in general when we have those steliums. Uh, but then again, there's nothing here from June all the way out into 2024. So uh, mm -hmm. that can be that can be a, a ways off. But when we look at that big term picture there in terms of the the cycle, I just think that this is. This is a pretty bullish picture from the, from the from the cycle and astro standpoint, and uh, again, when we look at that that Saturn cycle in Pisces, I think it's interesting. I do want to actually, you want to look at a little more astrology here. I have some more slides. Yeah, please do. That's uh, you know, I, I I know how hard you work at this stuff, and I I know these cycles are just you know days of the month or whatever it is, but they certainly work a lot of the times. Even the full moons and new moons don't work all the time, but they work a lot of the time. So please continue. Sure. Uh, so, you know, this is typically the United States is the sign of cancer. So when Saturn gets into these cardinal signs, the market tends to struggle. Uh, so this is Aries, Cancer, Libra, Capricorn. So in general, uh, when Saturn comes into these cardinal signs, especially with Capricorn here, which is what we had during COVID, uh, the markets really struggle. Uh, and this goes back to the chart of the, of the United States. They should struggle. When, and a cardinal, when, when Saturn's making a, a hard aspect to uh if you, to your element to your, to your sorry your modality uh which is in this case cardinal united states that's what we see also this is interesting too so i i looked at these starting dates of the s p futures dow futures e-mini dow futures and then the s p uh e-mini futures and these are the dates right so every time a market is born when it does that first trade it picks up that imprint it imprints that energy and so it's Take a look at this. So the markets struggle when Saturn moves across those dates. You see that? So that's kind of interesting. So even if you look at something like the futures markets, when they start trading, when the Saturn moves over that, these markets tend to get depressed. Hey, listen, stay with us, folks. Shane Smoling, WolfTrader.com. We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious tech, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. 
Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, we're back, folks, speaking with Shane Smullyan on some astrology cycles that we like to hear about. So please continue, my friend. Sure. I, I'm going to show you. I actually found a few graphs here of some steliums, which is kind of interesting. This was some steliums going back to 2022. Uh, this is the market here. So in, in I just kind of dug these up, so I'm going to go through these to talk about. So normally in a normal functioning market, the markets down here, the futures, tend to model these steliums. So the steliums are concentrations of planets. They're not even transits. They're not even like, well, it's making a trine or a conjunction. These are just – well, these are these are conjunctions essentially. They're all lined up. But you can see uh, when this stelium makes a peak here, the market mm -hmm. peaks. When the stelium falls, the market falls. The stelium peaks here, the market peaks, etc. They, they, they follow these patterns pretty well. Now, the steliums also show up in critical situations like when we have – uh, like market crash type of situations. Uh, I'll show you another one here. This is another stelium here. Um, you can see this is the S&P versus steel. This is 2022. So the the black line is the actual S&P here. And then these steliums, you can see when the plants cluster, the markets tend to mm -hmm. peak. When they, they go down, the markets fall, peak, fall, peak, etc. So they tend to follow these steliums. So this is a whole branch of uh, financial astrology that's just its own thing uh it's 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 weird it's like it's not even transits it's not cycles it's just the planets are lined up now one thing that we saw in 2009 and in during covid that i also noticed during these steliums is if the market is really really falling like we saw during covid this is 2020 again i'm just digging these up so i'm just kind of talking off the top of my head but in a normal functioning market these tend to follow these peaks and troughs but the market is really 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 falling we see that a stelium peak can occur at a low also. And this happened in 2009 too. It was exactly at the low when you had this planetary stelium here. So this mm -hmm. is another one here. This was during COVID. And this is a relatively new technology. I mean, I just started researching this in the last couple of years. And when I went back, I just couldn't believe it. I mean, you go back all the way to the 87 crash, you go back to the Great Depression. I mean, it's always there. Like when you see, when you see these crashes, it, like this shows up, the planetary speed index shows up. So this is something that uh, it's 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 just a very strange thing, uh, the, and and then also the speed of the planets, the the markets follow those too. It's it's a it's an interesting concept. Uh, it's a very we're very very early in the research of mm -hmm. this, so this is just something that's new. And you know, I I try to bring it up to subscribers to kind of give them an idea of what what's coming up here. But that that's an example. So when we get dramatic scenarios like this, like a eighty seven type crash or a or COVID, or or or, mm -hmm. or or the Great Depression, we look for these types of patterns to to appear, just to give us some clues as to see if we could have a bottom. And again, in 2009 was this was the same type of a situation. So interesting stuff for sure. Uh, but that's so we do have a couple of steliums right now. So that could keep the market just in the short term in a positive tilt. Uh, and again, like I said, I think if we do get some type of a crisis, another banking crisis, and the Fed has to act more, I think ironically that will become a bullish scenario for these markets. So uh, I think some, I think uh, somebody wanted to hear about gold. So I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the metals here. Sure. Uh, so 
So these, this is the closing bell. And so each day we talk about the statistics and then I have these two short-term cycle. Well, I have a short-term, the quad lunar and then the Fed juice. And then we kind of summarize this here for, for the market. So, um, so we, we cover copper, silver, gold. So copper essentially, uh, the, the, the Fed juice just went into a cell here. And so the Fed juice is the red arrow and the quad lunar is the blue arrow. And the reason we put these two, these two systems together is because the blue arrow is a cyclical pattern based upon a lunar. And then the red arrow is what is going on with the Fed. So this is the Fed juice. This is based upon how it's a neural network on how the market is reacting to the Fed. So let, we'll look at gold here for a second. So gold is an interesting situation because uh, gold has done very well uh, the last few weeks. It's, you know, it's, it's, there's been three flights to quality. You've had, you've had the bonds, you've had Bitcoin and you've had gold. And I, I think Bitcoin has done the best. I mean, Bitcoin came 30 plus percent off the lows, but gold has been very done, a, had a very respectable rally here. We had some very nice long trades last week in the, in the polar R squared, but it did come into a, a high here on the, the quad lunar cycle on the 17th and it makes a low on the 31st. But the Fed juice here has been in a buy since 3-2. It's still in a buy on this. So uh, this, you know, in terms of the Fed juice, the Fed juice is a longer term signal. So the Fed juice has, it, it, these are the last few signals the Fed juice made. It made a buy at 1-3, a sell on 2-1, and it's still in a buy. So long term, it's still pushing up. But on the medium term cycle, uh, gold gold just made an intermediate high here. I know it just popped up to these new highs today at, at uh, it was a 2004 right now it is. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's it's in a short term. These quad lunars have been really good. Uh, the, these new quad lunars we have, these blue cycles, they've been just very, very good at modeling these markets. So you could see some short term, you know, it's going to struggle a little bit here. But everybody, everything is reacting right now to this bank situation. The question is, you know, what's going to survive? Is, is, is gold going to stay up with Bitcoin or is Bitcoin going to do better than gold or the treasury is going to go up, whatever it is? Uh, so I like to track uh, – between these two, I like to track Bitcoin versus gold. This is this pairs trade. So I, I think these this is really important to compare these two uh, because these two markets are intertwined. So when one goes up, the other a lot of times the other goes down. Not always. They're going up together now, but on a relative basis, they tend to move opposite. And so just yesterday, uh, gold pairs. This is a pairs trade now. They could still both go up, but the pairs trade on gold just went into a sell here. And, and Bitcoin just went into a buy. And the thing that the situation that I'm looking at here is, you know, gold has done done very well here, like I said, but Bitcoin on a percentage basis is is doing better. And if we do get a risk on rally here, if the like like I said, if something breaks further in the banking system and the Fed has to just start buying the bonds like the Bank of England did, I think Bitcoin there's a good chance that Bitcoin will move with S P higher. And I think that will be the risk on trade. If that occurs, I think right now, though, gold, because we have the uncertainty, gold is holding up uh, substantially well. But if we look at the actual solar cycles of the two of them, um, Bitcoin has a stronger solar cycle coming up here in the next few weeks than a few months than gold does. So uh, we'll have to see. Also, when we talk about long term cycles, I talked about the S&P 500 in, in, in that Saturn cycle that we talked about, which is which is this cycle here for the S&P 500, right? But gold also has its own Saturn cycles. And I talked about this before, that gold, if you look at the long-term Saturn cycle of gold, um, it's a six-wave cycle for gold. And so while the S&P is, is bullish right now, gold in terms of the Saturn cycle is actually bearish. And so it's confusing because we have a panic right now and people are just Go, fly, go into quality. But the question is, if this panic calms down uh, soon, let's just say it does at some point, uh, what will happen? I mean, what has the stronger long-term cycles? And so this is why I talk about gold with people that, you know, I don't I don't own gold. I don't own Bitcoin. I don't have a dog in the fight. I'm a trader. I trade these. We traded gold last week, like I said, to the long side. But when, when I mm -hmm. try to look at a forecast, I want to look at cycles right so i don't really care one way or another right i just want to see what the cycles are and when we look at the gold uh saturn cycle it's a six wave cycle and we're right at the peak so hey listen thanks for joining us today my friend we'll have you on again soon and be safe over there okay thanks larry you bet shane small you folks wolftrader.com stand up guy great information we'll be right back
If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Okay, folks, uh, we're back. I wanted to wind up the show today and thank everybody, Mr. Shane Smolian, for uh, listening and the folks that called in. Certainly appreciate it. Remember, folks, um, it's not – you want to be able – let's see if I get this right. You want to be able to sell when you want to, not when you have to. And we all know who said that, old DW himself. Remember, folks, we have a major, major buy signal going in the uh, gold uh, that – Gives us a price objective of uh, 2,165, I believe, on the ABC disc section. So we're about $140 away from the buy signal we got yesterday. It's up $90. Uh, Treasury bonds are up three handles. The stocks are down 110 handles and dropping. So uh, these banking stocks look very bad, folks. They're getting worse and worse. So that's where the news is going to come from. They don't tell us what it is, but when these people are selling stocks, they know what they're doing, I guess, but we'll have to wait and see. It's going to lead to a great buying opportunity eventually. But what you've got to do is to be able to be time it just right. And we're over some major stuff, but it hasn't kicked in yet. So let's just stick with the program. Keep your stops working, and that's about the, the best thing you can possibly do for yourself. So that's all I can tell you. We've got a minute to go. Uh, there's one... Uh, if anybody wants to call, it's a little bit too late to doing that. But the beepers are going off again because the markets are making new lows on the day. If you'll bear with me here. I want to take watch these watch these stocks, folks, on the um, 
the uh, what do you call those darn things? The uh, wow, look at that, thirty nine fifty three, folks. That's ninety handles lower than the high. We're making new highs in bonds, and uh, Alexi Gold sold off a couple of bucks here uh, after it hit that target up there, two hundred five. We'll see what that does here uh, down the road here, but uh, bonds are getting very strong again, and that's the key, folks. Because remember, I want to bring this chart up on the bonds because uh, you know we've got a chance here to make that uh, level of. 139 and I'll bring that up and see you all on the flip side tomorrow live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless